Okay, uh, hello and welcome back uh, to this 31st lecture on bio microelectromechanical systems. Let's do a quick preview of what we did in the last lecture. So, we talked about intermolecular forces, uh, Leonard Jones potential model for molecular systems. Uh, if you may recall, two molecular systems I and J separated by a distance R were defined, uh, where we try to find out what the potential is between I and J uh, in terms of uh, an energy scale and uh, the ratio r by sigma where sigma is the distance scale r is the intermolecular uh, distance or distance of separation between i and j and so we got an expression for uh, epsilon energy scale times of r by sigma to the power minus 12 minus r by sigma to the power minus 6 uh, where the first term would correspond to uh, the pairwise repulsion between the electrons on the outermost shells of both systems and the second term would actually be weak van der Waals forces of attraction between the nucleus on another one with the electron on the other uh, particular system. We also tried to derive uh, uh, the forces between uh, the two systems I and J where uh, we take the negative grad of uh, potential uh, and uh, this would essentially be again in terms of an attractive force and a repulsive force. Okay, uh, we uh, we studied these in context of several diatomic gases, some other gaseous systems, including CO2 and air, and then tried to determine the energy scales in terms of energy per unit temperature, uh, energy per unit Boltzmann constant, and uh, distance of separation in nanometers. Okay, and then uh, we also saw that if we plot such systems, we'll have typically a potential well uh, on which exactly. Uh, the repulsion and attraction would be same and beyond which uh, the attraction would predominate uh, over some distance up till uh, there is a, a reversal and, and the repulsion again becomes strong. So, we also talked about molecular dynamic simulations uh, which means essentially uh, trying to simulate uh, Newton's second law m d 2 r by d t 2 uh, with respect to the, uh, the total amount of forces uh, based on the negative grad of uh, the Renard Jones potential and uh, there uh, we also defined the cutoff radius to simplify uh, calculations or truncate calculations, so that they may not just go infinitely uh, and uh, may have a converged solution. And so essentially uh, wherever the continuum assumption fails, uh, uh, Navier-Stokes is replaced by the MD simulation models okay. and uh, this uh, was followed by a brief uh, description about micro scale mixing behavior of Reynolds numbers at different scales uh, and its change from laminar to the transition region to fully turbulent flow. We talked about entrance length effects uh, particularly in case of micro channels about 60 percent the hydraulic diameter uh, in small Reynolds numbers and then we started discussing in details about micro mixers valves and pumps. So, we would like to proceed uh, ahead uh, on this uh, note I would just like to uh, reiterate that micro scale mixing is essentially all diffusional uh, which is based on uh, either uh, the interfacial area or by somehow reducing the diffusion time. So, when we talk about reducing diffusion time there is uh, mostly uh, there are some mostly architectures uh, which would come into the category of passive mixing. So, therefore, in such mixers there is no uh, mechanical part. So, essentially it is a non-mechanical and uh, passive means that there is no energy supplied essentially. So, you have to just by intelligent architecture design let the flow um, have a reduced diffusion time okay. and one way of doing it really is uh, lamination and uh, as you all know uh, from before lamination is essentially thin laminates of different type of fluids stacked against each other. So, if you have a green dye and a, a water sample which is moving past a channel, these are two laminates essentially and uh, if I can somehow split these flows apart and bring them together in a manner that we can have 4 laminates from 2, uh, 8 from 4 so on so forth. What is reducing here is the laminate size. So, the effective diffusion length which is between the water and the dye reduces to d by 4, d by 8 so on so forth. So, let us look at this example here. So, you have uh, a case where you are actually splitting apart 
uh, two flows okay so there is this channel here which i'm marking through this yellow highlighter which is filled up with the dye okay and uh, let me just uh, clear this region so this is filled up with the dye it's also represented by the hatched area okay and we have this other channel uh, which is uh, represented by uh, let's say this uh, brown color which is essentially of a different nature so this goes here this essentially goes into this region so in this particular region though if you see there are four laminates okay if you look at this region closely there are four laminates and there are two of uh, the hatched sections and two plain areas okay so there are four laminates essentially so let's look at how you do that so you have uh, two planes essentially you have a plane which is flowing below another uh, the the dye here which is uh, shown or the in in white okay let's just rub these colorations off so the dye here which is shown white is at a bottom plane it's at a bottom plane and the dye which is uh, shown by the hatched is at the top plane and these two dyes flow on the top of each other up till an extent when they are able to converge into a small channel so that you make uh, sections in a manner that uh, let's say you have split up this uh, top region you have split up this top region into two channels as you can see okay and you have similarly split up the bottom region again into two channels one here going this direction and another here going this direction the top region is one here going this direction another going this direction okay now what you do is you take all these uh, together here and rapidly converge it into a smaller section in this particular region okay in this particular region so you are converging rapidly into this smaller section here however you are converging it in a manner that all the four channels have their dye outlets getting converged here so what essentially result says that you have from two from the bottom and two from the top uh, made in a manner that you have an alternate one from bottom one from top one from the second one from bottom and the second one from top laid out parallel to each other so you are stacking uh, the two dies on a smaller channel so i call it lamination so we are trying to laminate if you remember from your composites lectures laminates are essentially layer by layer okay so you have one layer of fluid of type 1 secondly another layer of fluid of type 2 then another of one another of two and you are trying to laminate the flow into pieces so the advantage here is many folds let's look at some of the advantages that uh, you automatically get out of this so if you look at the diffusion length here really the diffusion length is uh, essentially d plus d that is 2d okay the diffusion length here as you are seeing this is d and this part is d so it is 2d and uh, so so basically this whole area is nothing but 4d okay so, um, so and and this particular diffusion length here is 2d all right now the length actually changes to d by 2 so from 2d length 
you are changing to d by 2 all right and uh, so effectively what is happening so the diffusion length which was 2 d got changed to d by 2 which is actually 1 fourth of 2 d. So, this is 1 fourth of 2 d. So, the diffusion length is changing uh, as a is function of laminates. So, if you have uh, if you are laminating 4 times the diffusion gets reduced by the old length by the number of laminates. Similarly, if it were 8 times the diffusion would get reduced by 8 and so on. So, therefore, what you are essentially doing is you are trying to split up the streams into n laminates whereas, where the new diffusion length here you see this is d by 2 okay, and this is 2 d. So, is equal to the 2 d which is the old diffusion length divided by the number of laminates. So, very very interesting phenomena. So, what is the conclusion of all this? Uh, the time of diffusion as you already know from our previous uh, descriptions is proportional to the square of the diffusion length. Okay. So, therefore, if there is a transverse length between two flows which are flowing in a channel, uh, the cross sectional length actually is the diffusion length in that case. And uh, the flow is uh, the, the diffusion time is proportional to square of that particular length. So, here if you see the time old was actually d proportional to d old square right? and uh, the time t new is now proportional to d old uh, d new square which is actually proportional to d old square by n square. Okay. So, therefore, uh, the new time is greater than the uh, or, or, or lesser than the old time by a factor of n square. So, so definitely it is an advantage because uh, the, the new time of diffusion reduces by a factor of the square of the number of laminates that you are packing in a small section of the channel. Uh, so, that is uh, uh, that is also known as a parallel lamination mixer. Okay, that's how technically it is defined because you are actually in a same plane parallelly laminating the flows into several laminae. Now you can actually uh, try to introduce uh, these flows in a manner uh, where uh, you can do it sequentially. So if you try to split it apart n times and take it back again in a three dimensional manner uh, then you can do it sequentially. Okay. And so, that is how uh, a sequential lamination mixture comes into being and as you will see uh, uh, the ratios there between the diffusion new the time of diffusion new and the time of diffusion old would be uh, quite different than that in the parallel lamination case. So, let us see what the sequential lamination mixture would look like. So, here let us suppose you have two flows okay, and these flows are parallelly flowing through a small channel uh, like this. So, what you do is you divide the section of these two flows half and half and one half you take up the plane and another half you take down the plane. So, it is now a three dimensional uh, situation okay. and then you mix them together back into a similar plane, but in a different manner. So, let me just look at it in in uh, in this way okay so let's just look at it through uh, a more clear illustration so let's suppose you have uh, a case here where you have uh, one channel cross section in the center with two flowing dyes let's say you have a hatched dye which is probably a green dye and water here so, what you do is you split this flow into two parts. Okay. So, this part you take up here on this particular plane. Okay. This is a different plane. So, you have half and half here and this other part you take in a different manner in a plane which is at the bottom. Okay. So, as I told you, you are essentially taking one on the top side and another on the bottom like this and here this again is uh, a hatched and, and a plain die 
and then what you do is you take these back into the same plane and mix them together okay so you have partly flows coming like this okay and partly flows coming back from here into the same plane all right and so essentially you have a half hatched half water another half hatched another half water but now what you have done is from an initial two laminates you have split it into four laminates and this sequence carries on so you have one channel which is half of the main channel which goes in the uh, plane down another half of the channel being projected in the plane up and then you are coming back again into the same area where you are actually laminating these half and half into four okay and then four into eight and eight into sixteen and so on so forth so this is called a sequential lamination mixer so here you can see the different stages so at stage one you have from two uh, which generates into four in stage two you have split it up and you are mixing it together is four in stage three you are mixing it again into eight and so on so forth so here if you consider uh, the way this uh, this lamination happens then the d nu so the d nu is equal to the d old divided by 2 to the power n minus 1 let me just explain this a little bit more here so that uh, for the for the common you know uh, reference sake so let's say we are beginning uh, this uh, here with uh, let's say uh, the diffusion length d okay here if you see here the diffusion length between these two hatched dye and the water sample is d uh, if you see here in this particular instance after the second stage has been crossed so n is equal to 2 here in the second stage uh, uh, the d actually becomes d by 2 okay so the diffusion length is only uh, related to half the the length right between the two hatch dies and water sample okay so d by 2 in the third case when n equal to 3 and the diffusion length actually further becomes d by 4 okay so the only equation which can fit all this is that the d new is actually equal to the d old divided by 2 to the power of n minus 1 where n is the number of stage So, essentially if n is 2 here uh, d nu should be d old by 2 2 minus 1 n minus 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1 ok if n is 3 here uh, d nu should become d old by 4 so on so forth. So, it pretty much matches with uh, the physical dimensions that we have been showing in the different stages of uh, mixing. One more interesting thing here is that uh, of course, if d nu and d old are related by this 2 to the power n minus 1 relationship, uh, the time nu in this case should be actually uh, 1 by 4 to the power of n minus 1 times of the time old. So, uh, for the initial n's um, the one which uh, earlier uh, kind of mixers the parallel lamination mixtures showed n square uh, relationship changes to 4 to the power of n minus 1. So, the concept and uh, uh, the fabrication mechanism and uh, the whole mechanism of laminating the flow is totally totally different in both the cases. So, this is also known as sequential lamination mixers. So, the idea is that uh, once the d is smaller uh, the rate kinetics in the diffusion model can be represented by uh, the, the temporal variation of concentration d c by d t being proportional to the second derivative of concentration with respect to x. 
So, you have this relationship dc by dt equal to diffusion constant d times of d 2 c by d x 2, where x is the diffusion path length, okay, the cross length uh, of the two flows, the cross sectional length of the two flows. So, uh, that is what sequential uh, lamination mixers typically do. Okay. Now, uh, micro mixers uh, based on the way that they are able to promote uh, mixing can be classified into passive and active mixers. Passive mixers are essentially by intelligent design, uh, where there are absolutely uh, uh, no mechanical parts or no energy that is being supplied. Okay. So, uh, several uh, different types of mixers come in this category, all the parallel and lamination mixers, where either you split uh, the flows using uh, uh, you know uh, a parallel sequence uh, and stack the laminates close to each other, uh, whether by going in plane, out of plane or going in the same plane. Uh, uh, that could be one mechanism of mixing. Another mechanism could be injection based micro mixer here. It is a very simple mechanism as you are seeing there are two channels. Okay. So, there is a channel uh, which is pointed out by this a area in the lower stack or lower layer of the stack which is called A. So, this is one channel and uh, the top channel uh, is uh, in the second uh, portion of the stack which is called channel B and uh, there are these small capillaries drilled in this channel B. So, that uh, when, when you flow uh, material A, there is an oozing out of A uh, into the channel B. So, essentially you are forming micro globulates of dye A within uh, the flowing dye B and uh, all you are doing here is increasing the cross sectional area. So, that the mass transport goes up at a certain flux level and uh, because of the higher mass transport uh, and, and more prominent diffusion uh, mixing happens quicker. The other categories of mixer uh, are uh, uh, active micro mixers, where uh, you supply some kind of energy by either a mechanically moving uh, part or uh, uh, as we will see in some illustrations and we have been seeing before also uh, some electrically induced mixing is carried out or magnetic field induced mixing is carried out. So, uh, some, some form of energy has to be supplied to active micro mixers that is the way they are defined. Uh, Let us suppose uh, this particular illustration is an example of uh, mixers with pumped fluid inlets. So, you have fluids A and B here and this is also known as a, known as a chaotic mixer. So, what you do is you take two pumps here pump 1 and 2 and uh, then pump uh, excerpts from fluid A into the stream of B and excerpts from fluid B back into the stream of A. So, you are essentially creating laminates. Uh, so, this is the black layer, this is uh, again the white layer, this is the black layer, again this is the white layer and so on and so forth. So, you are creating laminates throughout this cross section here as you are seeing by repeated pumping and uh, that again creates uh, uh, a smaller length of diffusion and uh, the time of diffusion again uh, reduces uh, because of uh, a smaller length of diffusion. So, that is a kind of uh, chaotic mixer uh, which comes into the active mixer category. Uh, the other kind of mixer is ultrasonic mixer as you are seeing here this is another active mixer. So, here there is a channel at the top which has uh, two fluids flowing past each other like mentioned here. So, this channel here is showing the two fluids inlets uh, of different colorations passing through somewhere uh, in this particular channel and there is a piezo disc at the bottom which vibrates and thus creates perturbations and deformations between these two layers. So, that there is a mass transport enhanced by this piezo effect. Okay. The thousands of bubbles actually generated and this principle is also known as cavitation. So, whenever there is a vibrating surface which is vibrating at a very high frequency and there is a fluid in contact with the surface, there is a tendency of the fluid to uh, lag uh, the motion of the plates. So the plate moves forward and backward much more rapidly than the fluid can actually respond and therefore, there are almost always uh, uh, vacuum traps which are created okay, and, and the air from the diffused air or the diffused mass of air in the liquid actually comes into this trap and this results in formation of thousands of bubbles is called cavitation 
and the bubbles come upwards and they try to uh, because they are lighter in weight because of the Archimedes principle they would come to the top and so these bubbles are essentially responsible for all the transportation because these bubbles would create uh, differential pressure zones within this uh, small interface uh, of two mixers and it would create a huge amount of mass transport uh, based on that. So, that is what another kind of active mixer would be categorized as it is called ultrasonic mixer. So, uh, primarily again uh, the basic classification of, of micro mixers are on the basis of whether uh, they have energy supplied for mixing or they do not have energy supplied for mixing. So, I would like to now uh, do a small example numerical example where we want to design a Y mixer and uh, here uh, the task is to um, mix ethanol completely with water in a parallel micro mixer with two inlets and is a Y mixer ok. So, you have ethanol coming from one water coming from another and let us say it is mixing along this channel here length and this uh, mixing is totally taking place at room temperature. So, you do not need to consider the energy equation here and the flow rates uh, of both ethanol and water are both 10 microliters per minute or each 10 microliters per minute from both sides ok. And so, we have to determine the required length here L uh, of mixing channel if uh, the cross section has 100 micron square now that means it is actually a uh, uh, 100 micron by 100 micron square section uh, which is the cross section of this channel and we know need to determine the length. So, what do we have to really consider here one is uh, uh, the, the critical factor of what is the time of diffusion and uh, with this kind of a velocity the idea is the fluid should be able to contain itself uh, at least for a time equal to the time of diffusion for uh, uh, you know the, the diffusion to happen properly before the fluid emanates from the other end of the micro mixer. So, these are the various inlets inlet 1 inlet 2 and this is the outlet and so therefore, the length also which is traversed by the fluid is diffusion time times of the velocity of the fluid and uh, let us see what uh, this would be. So, the diffusion coefficient of ethanol in water at room temperature is 0 0.84 times 10 to the power of minus 5 centimeter square per second and the characteristic mixing length in the channel uh, width is W equal to 100 micrometers ok. also the diffusion length is essentially the width in this case which is 100 micrometers. So, uh, the, the time of diffusion tau diff can be also represented as square of w by twice d in this case it is uh, 100 10 to the power minus 6 square divided by 2 times of 0 0.85 8 4 10 to the power minus 5 times uh, and this essentially uh, is uh, in centimeter square per second. So, if you want to convert this into meter square I have to multiply with minus 4 uh, 10 to the power minus 4 and so this comes out to be equal to 5.95 seconds and uh, if we consider the average velocity of flow. of uh, the mixing liquids so essentially u in this case is equal to uh, the flow rate of water plus flow rate of ethanol by the area of cross section of the channel ok velocity of flow again equal to is equal to the volume rate of flow divided by the cross sectional area as uh, the meter per second in which the fluid move. And so, here essentially both the flows 
are flowing at a rate of 10 microliters per minute which means it is uh, 2 times of 10 10 to the power minus 6 liters which is 10 to the power minus 6 into 10 to the power minus uh, 3 meter cube okay. and this is per minute. So, you have divided by 60 and then the area of cross section is of, of course, uh, 100 micron square. So, 110 to the power minus 6 square. So, this uh, effectively comes out to be equal to flow velocity of 33.33 10 to the power of minus 3 meters per second. I would just like to uh, draw your attention to the fact that the velocity is only about 33 millimeters per second which is uh, not very high considering the other uh, flow rates etcetera which you have, have seen here uh, and that is primarily because uh, uh, you know the, the cross section of the channel. So, so, the required length for the mixing in this case is nothing but the diffusion time which is 5.95 times of uh, the velocity of uh, uh, the fluid flow and that comes out to be equal to about 198 millimeters. So, the length of the channel here which you need is really about 200 millimeters for the flow to mix completely. Okay. So, that is how you do these problems of uh, uh, designing Y mixers. Okay, so, uh, let us actually go on to another numerical problem. So, well, the problem is pretty much uh, similar you have to actually find out this time that suppose uh, you know the above mixing channel whatever we uh, found out is to be designed with a meandering shape or an S shape uh, just to save lateral device surface area. MEMS is all about integrating into a small platform. Okay. So, uh, let us say if this channel structure is placed uh, inside a, a square area, uh, we have to determine the dimensions of the area and also the number of turns that it, it would take for this channel to meander in the small area. So, let us actually see this uh, as uh, the figure illustrated here at the bottom. So, you have uh, a width and empty uh, each channel has a width of w and uh, in between the channels also there is a width of w. Okay. So, in between uh, uh, the channels is a, is a dead zone essentially where there is uh, just a flat surface the channels are engraved within this flat surface. So, the channels have thickness w and uh, uh, between two such uh, between one meandering channel uh, the inter channel spacing is about w. Okay. So, w is kind of an island uh, here in this region. So, we need to find out you know, the dimensions uh, of this particular square platform over which uh, these channels have uh, been kind of integrated and uh, also we need to determine how many turns uh, this channel would get take within this square platform. So, we assume uh, the channel walls consume the same amount of area as the channel itself. So, now something interesting can be done here. Let us suppose that this dimension here all the way up to here is x 1. Similarly, you have another dimension x 2 here. So, on so forth. Okay. So, the total surface area required for the mixing channel is W L of the channel area plus W L of the wall area. 
okay or w x 1 and w x 1 I am sorry uh, w x 1 for this particular one turn. So, essentially uh, let me just reiterate this point again that uh, uh, for uh, this particular channel uh, with uh, one length equal to x 1 let us say from here to here and one length equal to x 2 from here to here. Um, the total amount of area that this channel would uh, need is essentially uh, w the, the width times of x 1 plus uh, the width of the wall times of again another x 1. Okay. So, for each of these runs the total area is twice w x 1. Now, there are several such x 1s, x 2s, x 3s, so on so forth to make the whole channel. So, essentially uh, the total amount of area if suppose there are several of these different uh, turns inside is twice w x 1. Let us say they are all different lengths plus twice w x 2 plus twice w x 3 so on so forth. So, 2 w can be taken common and then this is x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 plus x 4. So, this can be taken so on so on so on so forth as the total length of the channel L. So, total area that the channel would need is 2 w L. Okay. So, as we know here uh, the w essentially uh, the width of the channel is uh, given as 100 micrometers and the length we found out from the earlier equation was 198 mm for the diffusion time to be good enough for the time for the diffusion time to be uh, smaller than the smaller or equal to the residence time. And so therefore, 2 w l here comes out to be equal to 3.96 times of 10 to the power of 7 micrometer square. So, if you assume this dimensions uh, of this particular area to be a square because uh, it is a square area. So, you have a here and a here. So, you are left with the dimensions of the square area which is root of this a where a is the total length uh, total area that of, of the mixing channel uh, that the mixing channel would occupy. So, essentially it is equal to root over 39.6 10 to the power of 6 micron square which is uh, about 6293 micrometers. So, this essentially is uh, uh, the area about 6.3 millimeters by 6.3 millimeters over which you can pack uh, this serpentine or this meandering channel. Uh, also uh, there is a question about the number of turns uh, that this channel would take and so assuming that uh, we have uh, each turn comprising of about 4 different widths and this I would like to iterate, reiterate by uh, just rubbing off some of the line work here made particularly here. So, if you look at this particular case uh, you can find out that you know in one particular uh, turn which starts from let us say point here all the way to point here there are about 4 w's w plus w plus w. Um, Sorry, so it starts from here. So uh, it, there's about four W's. Uh, we start from. Let me just reiterate this again. Uh, w plus W plus W plus W, right? So from here to here of the channel, which is one complete turn. Okay. Uh, essentially, the total width that this channel would move is about 4 w. Okay. And so, this is equal to about 400 microns. So, if one turn corresponds to 400 microns, uh, the total 6293 microns would have exactly 6293 by 400 turns. 
which is equal to about 16. So, the whole channel can be meandered into a 16 turn architecture uh, with an area of about 39.6 times 10 to the power of 6 micron square and one side equal to about 6.3 millimeters. So, you can see the scale uh, what is important for me to tell you is that the scale essentially is very small I mean 6 by 6 uh, millimeter uh, by milli 6 millimeter by 6 millimeter is uh, probably close to the size of a, a 25 paisa coin and uh, so in this particular area you can always create 16 turns and make uh, the length of the channel to be good enough um, or as long as about uh, uh, close to about um, 198 millimeters for the diffusion time to be equal to uh, the residence of the two flows. Let us uh, do another numerical example here uh, we want to design in now a parallel lamination mixer and let us say the above mixer has to be redesigned with more lamination layers. Okay. So, instead of uh, just a green dye and a white dye mixing on one particular channel uh, as a part of the Y, you now are wanting to laminate it into several different uh, cross sections. So, you want to find out that uh, in the new design the channel length has been constrained to be 1 millimeter that has been given in the question. So, how many laminates would be needed uh, for doing the same thing as uh, this 2 laminate set was doing in a 198 millimeter long channel. So, essentially this is uh, what the question is. So, let us assume that uh, since the average velocity remains the same as in all the other mixer designs earlier the mu new mixing time will be proportional to the square of the new diffusion length. Okay. And uh, so, therefore, really the T new is equal to T old times of L new by L old. and uh, the L nu as we know is about 1 millimeters which is the requirement and N old is about 198 millimeters. Let me just reiterate one thing here that this L nu is essentially the length of the channel it is not the length of the cross section. Okay. So, this is not the diffusion length this is the length of the channel. So, if you are assuming that the velocity of flow is uh, same in both the cases you have uh, the ratio between L nu and tau nu giving the new velocity. And similarly, ratio between L old and tau old as the old velocity and they are same these two are same. So, therefore, it is an inverse ratio in which you can calculate the uh, T nu by T old it is the same ratio is the ratio of different lengths L nu by L old. Okay. And uh, we have said in the question that uh, the L nu has to be about 1 millimeters when uh, the L old is about 198 millimeters as we calculated before. So, this uh, brings out if we assume this T old to be 5.95 seconds remember from the first example uh, then this uh, T nu time would uh, 
acquire a value 3 10 to the power minus 2 seconds. Okay. So, as we know that the time of nu is also uh, proportional to square of the cross section length and uh, essentially inversely proportional to 2 d and in this case there would be a number of laminates n square. Uh, so, therefore, this uh, n value can be derived here as uh, w divided by twice d tau nu and uh, essentially uh, if you put the value of w as 100 microns uh, give me a minute here 100 10 to the power minus 6 and uh, the diffusion coefficient to be uh, the same as uh, as we took earlier 0 0.84 times 10 to the power minus 5 times 10 to the power minus 4 meter square per second times of tau nu which is 3 10 to the power minus 2 seconds are we left with a value of n which is equal to about 14. So, there have to be 14 laminae for uh, the microfluidic mixer to have a similar performance as the in, in 1 mm length as happens in 198 laminae uh, lengths 198 mm length with only uh, one laminae of each kind. So, that is how you do some of these problems. I um, would like to uh, do another numerical example for the sake of clarity. So, let us suppose now that uh, we want to design uh, the same mixing time of the example before this. So, which is about 3 10 to the power minus 2 seconds. Okay. So, you have to determine the number of stages uh, required if we decide to make a sequential laminar mixer instead of a um, parallel lamination mixer. So, what improvements do we need to make here? So, the improvements of uh, mixing time in parallel lamination mixer case are given by the equation what T nu by tau equals 1 by n square. Okay. And the improvement in time for a sequential one is given by T nu by tau equal to 1 by 4 to the power m minus 1, where m is the number of stages here. Mind you, this n and m are not same. Okay, n is the number of stages in the parallel uh, lamination mixer, and m is the number of stages in the sequential lamination mixer. So, for the similar kind of improvement, uh, uh, what is being reiterated in the question here that for same mixing time uh, of the design and example before this, determine the number of stages required if we decide to make a sequential instead of a parallel. So, we know that uh, for that uh, 1 by n square has to be equated to uh, 1 by 4 to the power of n minus m minus 1 and uh, if we take uh, natural log on both sides we have twice ln of n equals m minus 1 ln 4 or m comes out to be 1 plus twice ln n by ln 4 you know n is 14 which we calculated last uh, example and therefore, the m value comes out to be equal to 5. Okay. So, there are only about 5 stages in a, a parallel a sequential lamination mixer which corresponds to about 14 stages in the parallel lamination mixer or 14 laminates in the parallel lamination mixer. So, uh, a parallel of course, may be a little faster because uh, you are bringing all the 14 together. Uh, assuming uh, that you have split apart uh, these flows seven times and you know bringing them together back again uh, the parallel would be a little faster than uh, the sequential from practical standpoint. So, for a 1 mm mixing channel each mixing stage of the new design only occupies about uh, 
200 microns or so. Okay, so you have the total mixing channel length in case of the parallel lamination mixer about 1 mm about 1000 microns and so each stage is exactly at 200 microns from the beginning okay that's how uh, you categorize uh, these uh, kind of mixers so in a nutshell now you probably uh, have seen or now you can do some calculations by yourself and have a, a good idea about these different uh, forms of mixers uh, be it parallel or sequential or um, y shaped or meandering or any other geometry so let us look into some practical examples after this uh, uh, as to how uh, the the macro scale intuition uh, can play havoc uh, when you translate uh, the information onto the micro scale. So, I would like to look at a problem which uh, we kind of experimentally did uh, uh, back in our graduate days uh, where we talk about um, a y type a T shaped mixer with uh, uh, the flow controlling valves on both uh, arms of the T. Okay, so, there is a case where now there are two streams which are coming on both arms of the T and, and mixing along the stem of the T and then you have control valves on both sides uh, of the arms. So, you can control uh, the flow rates from both these uh, streams one at a time and then try to investigate what happens within the stem of a T. So, the problem is somewhat like this as illustrated here in the figure uh, as you can see here the, the constraint for this device is that uh, it is actually a microfluidic device with flow sources which are placed about 25 centimeters above uh, it is like gravity driven flow and uh, the pressure that it creates at the entry is about 2.45 kilo Pascals. The device is essentially comprised uh, of three layers. Uh, so, there is a glass layer here which has uh, these uh, small drilled holes cylindrical holes. Uh, which can do the inlet outlet of the fluids and uh, there is a PDMS layer which has uh, this T feature and micro channels in between which does the mixing action and then on the top there is another PDMS layer with these two blister pockets. Okay. So, there is a uh, tendency of these pockets to be filled in and out with compressed air so that you can act them as valves. So, there is a small uh, opening on the top uh, in the PDMS which kind of inflates and when it inflates the lower layer which is this particular layer here channel layer gets squeezed and uh, the, the valve gets closed and so the flow rate reduces uh, all the way to about very negligible uh, on both sides. So, you assemble these by putting layer 1 on the bottom of layer 2 and on the bottom of layer 3 and uh, then plasma bond all these three layers together as you can see or illustrate here in this particular figure. So, you have uh, uh, a layer at the bottom here which I have not shown it is a glass layer it is a transparent layer then layer at the top here which is again transparent but contains the channels essentially in the PDMS. Uh, the upper portion of the layer here as you can see is, uh, is all PDMS okay. the upper portion is all PDMS. So, you have a uh, channel only embedded at the uh, between this glass and the PDMS surface this part is solid PDMS okay. and then you have another layer of uh, PDMS which comes and sits at the top of this layer which are these blister pockets here as you can see and the blisters can be fitted in with uh, upchurch scientific uh, tubing about 121 gauge 1 by 21 gauge uh, made up of steel and then peak and you can epoxy the manner that uh, the, the air can flow in and out and thus inflate and deflate these blisters like this and uh, this okay. and so therefore as they inflate they kind of squeeze the channel which is below it here and here and uh, this channel kind of bends and blocks the flow 
because of these blisters. So, uh, now you have to uh, find out what happens by giving different designs here to the mixing rates. Okay? This was actually a student experiment and uh, it was a graduate class and then when they started doing this experiment, they realized that uh, whatever intuition they were carried, uh, carrying forth from the, micros, from the macro scale does not really translate very well to the micro scale. So, there were about four basic designs of uh, structures which were investigated in this uh, black box region. One was uh, as you see here, we call it a tube bank kind of structure. So, these are small perturbations, okay? these are small dots uh, which are uh, kind of in the PDMS like small cavities. And we expected that when we flow these two fluids, one from this end, another from this end, uh, there should be at least some twisting and turning because of these small, small cavities locally and local eddies would be created. In the second case, we talked about a triangular type of design where these cavities are now actually essentially triangular in nature like this, okay? they are small triangles. And the third was a figure 8 kind of design where we are splitting apart the flow and putting it back again and then again splitting apart and putting it back. And then we had this uh, serpentine uh, type of design where you had a meandering channel uh, and the two flows coming from both ends here mixing along this particular channel. So, uh, we are kind of uh, uh, towards the end of the lecture. So, what I would like to illustrate next time is how uh, when we flow fluids across these different structures, uh, different patterns are formulated and uh, which are the most, uh, which are the best designs uh, which can promote rapid mixing. Surprisingly, the results were very, very counterintuitive in this case. And then once we finish this, then we will start with uh, micro valves and micro pumps and uh, try to round it off in the next uh, two lectures or so. Thank you. Uh, we will, I will see you next time.